Pagacaru is back in action after winning at Hayen earlier in the week. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. UAE's new recruits are looking pretty good. Vuelta Ciclista, Andalusia. Poles beat Lushenko last year. That was a great one-week race, and we're here with Stage 1. The Queen stage on Stage 1. It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off, with the final climb being the Alto del Despierna Caballos which is about 7 k 10%, and then there's a false flat section above. We've got Enrique Mas here, Carlos Rodriguez, the, uh, the Andalusian, so a big race for him. Same break as last year, pretty much, in terms of teams represented, except for human-powered health missing, and it was UAE and Movistar chasing that break. It was a hard old stage for stage one. Even Garcia Cortina did a really good job as a ruler managing the break, and Ineos decided to use Frailer their Basque rider as like just to make the race harder for UAE and Movistar. He, he attacked up the road, got across to the breakaway. I love this bit, by the way, the tap on the bar. It's like when the coffee hits after the, the cafe rest stop, get on the wheels, get on the wheel boys, and they hop on. And with Frail up the road, it just made the race even harder. Like they spent 4,000 kilojoules, a lot of these guys before the base of the final climb on stage one in February. 4,000 meters plus of climbing. It's a hard old stage, and that's why we saw big gap because 7K, 7, 7% is not that hard for these guys. Um, and the gaps we saw were huge on this final climb. So Frailer went up the road. Eventually, he and Martin were caught by uh, Garcia Cortina, still pacing, I think, pressing the lap button. But, but the last climb starts about 18K to go, and then crests about 10, 9K to go. UAE takeover with Alessandro Covey, who'd been pacing for a lot of the day and was pretty strong at Tour Down Under immediately, and already the group split apart. So Despierna Caballos, I think, means like woken up or wake up the horses, and yeah, the boys got on the horse here at the base of the climb. Narrow, undulating, some you know <laughs> dodgy surface in places very difficult to move up and i think kobe was about to pull off there and wells was like you ain't done yet son and kobe keeps pulling so position's important if you're at the back here and there because draft is is hugely important on six to seven to eight percent the speed these guys are going with wellens pulling who is the new signing for uae coming over and he's always been good in February races. He saw it two to two at his Duval last year, him against Quintana. You know, when he goes for 20 minutes or even 10 minutes hard, he's putting down nearly 500 watts because of how big he is. And the draft, as I said, their single file is so important. If you're out of position, it's tough to move up. And Poggy's just sitting there beautifully in fourth wheel. Who's not there, though? Bahrain got numbers. But Carlos Rodriguez in the Spanish National Champs jersey's not there with uh, Sivakov and Gagenhart. And we go back and he's doing, maybe he's just been prescribed strengthies and he's just trying to, you know, do a 40 RPM cadence F interval. I don't think so, though, because he's on the radio and it's not, a, I thought it was a flat tire, but it's not that either because he's fiddling with his gears and then suddenly he's just like, meh, I'll just sprint back and do the whole climb in the big chain ring. So I almost think Rodriguez was the strongest of the Ineos guys today when you see what happens later in the climb, and he's still in the big chain ring there, and he's having a bridge back while Wellens is absolutely stomping to the point where he drops Micah off the wheel or just through a bend, loses the wheel, and Mike is like, you're going too hard, too surgy, comes back and keeps the pace going. But Rodriguez, you see through this hairpin, you know, he's trying to, he's having hit the wind himself. Moving, and this is the last thing you want to do before you're going to have to respond, because we know what's happening, what's about to happen. Pagan is about to attack. The last thing you want to do is chase back along the length of the whole strung out bunch and Rod in the wind, and Rodriguez had to do that. Whilst Micah starts pacing, I think Bennett's gone at this point. This is a largely half the Tour de France squad for uh, UAE, I think, and Rodriguez just makes it back onto Andreas Krohn's wheel, who, fantastic performance from Krohn and Cepeda. Cepeda the only, oh no, Lotto and Cepeda the only Pro Conti team riders in this group. And then, yeah, just clinical from UAE, they, the race was hard all day. I do wonder what would have happened if Rodriguez had been able to stay in good position. Could he have held Pagacha's wheel? We'll never know. But when Wellens does the final lead out for Pagacha, it's very similar to Lombardia. They rode it exactly the same way. And when you got the best guy, the strongest guy, it's exactly what you should do, especially when you got the team strength. You just hard race launch the final climb, keep him in good position, fresh as possible, and everyone else is chasing in the wind. Like, Rodzi Rodriguez here, Mars gives the wheel away pretty much when Wellens 
is still pulling before Pogacar even gets out of the saddle. Mars loses the wheel, and it's Rodriguez who's then their third wheel, and Sivakov and Gagenhut were already off the back. So I don't know. But still, pagacha has gone. It's only Santiago Butrago, who we saw very strong in the Saudi Tour for the second year in a row, who's able to bridge across to Pogacar, but at what cost? getting across to Pogacar's wheel. And, you know, that was the last two Ks of the climb proper were two Ks, 8%. But you see here, this ain't 8%. Then it ramps up a little bit and Pogacar hits Santi again and he cannot hold the wheel. So 12 Ks to go. They did about 6.3, 6.35 watts per kilo on the climb proper. But hard day, still got 12 Ks to go. And this is where Pogacar has not necessarily an advantage of a group who were working together behind, but... He's just got more absolute power than them. And the last three Ks of this, they're not steep. They're false flat uphill. So with the separation he got and, you know, the light weights of Landa and Buitrago pulling behind, they ain't bringing him back with 35 seconds. Huge gap he created, dominant like at Clásica Hayen. And then, que dura es este deporte, Pedro? Enric Mask. He keeps having bad luck in these one-week races. It's unbelievable. Last year, all the crash now gets a mechanical out of Group 2, so it's just we try to go Lander pulling. It's Haig and Caruso in a group with Sivakov, Gaganat, and Cepeda behind. Second thing, I two things I realized. Didn't know there was snow in Andalusia, uh, but there is, apparently, in February, and Pogac is on the descent. He's going to win uh, Cliff Notes to this stage. Second thing I noticed, though, was this looks like a different position to me. They've just moved over to Shimano from Campag, uh, UAE, and Pagaccio looks like he's got a more aero, not full Remco, but more aero position. The levers look tucked in to me. You can't see it from the, this side on, but front on you can. He looks like he's either narrowed his bars, changed his bars, definitely moved the levers. And it's just interesting that even a dual Tour de France winner, second in the Tour de France last year, Lombardi winner, yada, 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 still tinkering, still adjusting his position. And if you're going on long solos like he did at Jaén on Monday and like he did in Andalusia today, well, aero matters, I guess. But Pogaccio wins 37-second gap. GC's done. Queen stage on the first stage, I don't know about it. Maybe Bahrain could try something. Landismo lives. He came second in the stage, winning that sprint, incredible 1,500-watt peak. And then the group of Gagenhart, Sivakov, and Kaig Caruso were a little bit further behind with Enric Mas at 1 minute 38. So huge gaps. This thing is wrong. Lander and uh, Rodriguez group was on 38 seconds. Can anyone overthrow Pikachu? Probably not. Like His team's ridiculously strong. He's in top shape. I hope Bahrain and Ineos try, but there's only so much you can do. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Pikachu's looking in terrifying shape. Strada Bianca is coming up in couple of weeks. It'll be one of the favorites of that. Until Sage 2 tomorrow, ciao.